boy! Hey everybody, this is Cool Discs 101 or Marcus Shaw, whichever sounds better to you. Um, so this is my Q&A, my first ever Q&A put out there for people that have sent in questions. Some of you are probably like, oh, there's a Q&A? You had questions set up? Um, yeah, about uh, <laughs> uh, nine months ago. Now see, I really wanted to do this a lot, lot, lot sooner. Um, I had a handful of questions, and these are the ones I'm about to read out right now. I don't know what happened initially that kind of held it back. I think it was me making reaction images to this, or really just organizing answers. I don't really have um, thought out answers for a lot of these questions, and I kind of wish I kind of written stuff down, but you know what? I'm going to be as raw as I possibly can and just answer everything that I know at the top of my head. I may have to pause for a couple moments just to think on it, but I want to, you know, just have my thoughts just as they are right now when it comes to answering questions. Um, I know some time has definitely passed and some questions may vary, but I think some of them can still work and I can still answer them and I can still give more interesting answers to what I had previously intended on answering. I'm not making any sense. All right, so let's get to it. First question here is brought by Datboy Steve O, Steve O, 41. And it's, how is life treating you? And when is the next Steven Universe roast? Um, life itself has been going pretty all right. I've been kind of living a bit quietly. I'm not as outgoing as the next atypical person. I do work at a theater and I've been doing so for three years. Uh, I've been hoping to step up and kind of get some work that's a little bit more full time here and there. So that's where I am right now. I'm still having fun with doing my stuff hobby wise, including videos on here and, um, you know, anything that I have not put out there. I'm still doing good with I'm still just doing my own thing you know uh, it's I'm kind of treading slowly but I think I'm gonna be in a good position by the end of this year for sure um, as for the next Steven Universe roast there's one coming maybe two of them you know I I've held off for about a year I know I did one about um, the diamonds last time but uh, that Steven Universe movie came out and uh, Steven Universe future is already in the way so, I might have a few handfuls of things there that I might want to cover, and uh, maybe some fan art, but we'll see. Believe it that this year you might have a couple of videos, maybe three. It's going to depend if I find really good comparisons to literally burst my lungs at, because you know, I, I, I do that. That's how I roll. If you haven't seen my Steven Universe videos, uh, y'all are missing nothing. Please don't watch them. Please, please God, don't watch them. BC Artie asks, do you have plans on doing Deltarune comic dubs? Mm, I don't know. That may depend. I haven't really practiced or really given a thoughtful idea of what's canon with particular characters in those. Um, it may depend. I'll have to ask a few creators if I can use their comics um, for the use of a video. Depends. I might have an idea on Lancer's voice here and there, but I had something else planned. Not Delta Room related, but um, what came before it. Um, those of you that have followed me for a very long time kind of might know about my past work and how it's gone. Um, something might be coming back. Two things, actually, this year. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. But I can um, guarantee that stuff's coming. Pretty good stuff. Perhaps Deltarune? Perhaps Deltarune. But we shall see. And he also asks, what inspires you to do voice acting? Um, I think it's a lot of what I grew up with um, through television. Like, I am a big animation enthusiast. Probably not huge, 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 but I do watch a good handful of shows and had at a very young age. What I really liked just about the idea of knowing that one particular person out there can cover so many voices out there in the medium. Um, it just made me want to try doing just different voices under my own guise, whether they were impressions or kind of just doing something uh, original. There's not a lot of that from me, personally, but I just really like how there's so much vers versatility between certain um, voice actors. I really think 
that this has been a very big hallmark for me and you know i'm inspired by that every day and i see people working in the voice acting community that do so damn well and i think this is linked to the asmr stuff i watch as well um which really has pushed me to do something different with my voice and i you know I i'm having a ball with it um if it weren't for particular role-playing asmr channels um like lemon leaf uh, vividly and just so many more that I can't even name on the top of my head and people within those communities that follow those people they are just inspiring me every day whether it's just silly things or just you know things that just you know <laughs> it's really hard just to really describe what gets into the inspiration of this but I'm just so thankful of the community of people that are so talented and it kind of just their essence of talent and creativity passed down to me and I just want to be, you know, doing my part and just, you know, being being someone that's out there and just just does this for fun and just get these but uh, um, becomes part of a really great community as I do something that I love. So I think inspiration pulls from everywhere, but mainly from those that are, you know, just sharing something so talented back towards me. And and I do appreciate the work that they do and. Um, kudos to them for doing it as long as they possibly can. Um, any tips for how to train our voice to be a voice actor? Well, it comes to those that really gets into the essence of a character. Like, I can say anybody can do voice acting. I can't consider myself being a top tier. I mean, far from, obviously not. I mean, like, I'm kind of very, very amateur. Like, what I do in my mindset is really, when I'm doing an impression of a character, I really just envision their audio of their voice, the vocals of theirs, swapped with mine, so that I'm just sounding, I'm just kind of becoming the character. Like, if I'm quoting something, that really helps too, because I can know exactly what kind of tone and what kind of pressure of voice should I be giving to a certain character. Like, like, like all the time, I'm voicing a, a Dr. Doofenshmirtz, and I've been known for doing this voice a lot here and there, and I just, I really want to pull the essence of that character, just make him uh, very semi-awkward, and, uh, and, you know, just a really off guy, like, you, you kind of understand him, he's kind of real, but he's just a nerd, and, and problematic, and so, so I kind of just really take in the essence of that, I just swap my voice mentally so then i can work with it in a vocal fashion and i think it's just based on how you're connected to certain you know um um things that do show off a lot of voice acting um i feel everybody definitely has it and everybody has their ups and downs when it comes to what they're really good at i feel like work what works well with your voice whether it's a lot more of a deeper or a higher voice, there's always something for everybody, and it's always just honing in on that character, not just yourself acting as the character, you really gotta be them. I know that's cliche, and I know that's dumb, but you gotta be them, man. You really gotta be that person. And um, that's as far as I can say. Those of you that are really wanting to get into voice acting, I um, you know, wish you the best of luck, and I know you're gonna kill them if you just try your dang best. All right, Red Heavy asks, how did you get yourself to laugh that hard in those Steven Universe roasts? Were they forced or legit? Also, no offense, but I straight faced your roasts like a boss. Good for you. Good for you. <clears throat> so, how I do those are, they are actually forced. Sometimes when I'm like going through comparisons, when I make the videos, I do like actually laugh a little bit when I'm thinking of ideas and stuff that kind of come in my head when I see them, they're great. But the thing is, the trick was what I can do. I can force laughter really well. I don't. I only do it sometimes when I'm showing in groups of people. But when I do laugh, it, it feels genuine. I don't know how I'm able to pull it off. But like, it's so damn hard to the point where it sounds like I'm dying. And then I could just stop it at a at a at a at a, at a drop of a dime. Legit. Like if I'm just doing something like. <laughs> So it's just easy like that. So I could just swap on and off. And I just take that with the essence of that. See, the laughter comes from the original videos where I um, got inspired to make um, the Steven Universe roast. And it was a guy on some site called Flippagram that was like taking headshots of people and just 
just just just weird things and just comparing them to stuff that already exists and his laugh is natural to him but it was unbelievably uncanny i forget the dude's name if i ever find any information on him i'll post him and any of his content on or in the description i don't think he makes content anymore i think he was more active about like three or four years ago but he's the one that got me into that and using my knack of force pushing my laugh kind of really made me want to just go for it and do something that was of relevancy i mean steve universe is like inches away from being over and i still you know like i still like the show for sure um but you know it's just uh something i figured i'd just do for fun and i've been doing it every so often so um that's my trick uh, it's hard to duplicate, but if you can manage it and make your own when the show is over and I feel tired of doing them, then, um, good on ya. Good on ya. Captain C. Crasher has a handful of questions. First is, what was the first game you've ever played? Now, I thought about this for a quick moment, and I'm pretty sure the first video game console I ever owned was a Game Boy, and on it was Super Mario Land. That was my first intro introduction to anything Nintendo. And... Super Mario Land was just such a strange, such a simple game. I never knew, never knew anything about Super Mario 64 at one point. I think around the time where I was about five or six, I was conscious about like a lot of things in certain video games, but I had a Game Boy Color that I think was handed down from somebody else. And I remember buying a game, or maybe my dad got a game from a discount store, and that was Super Mario Land. And just I couldn't get past the first world because I didn't understand how the implications of certain video games worked. When I saw friends play further ahead in a game, it was just crazy. And uh, the game just was enthralling for me. And it just gave me this weird visual, just this weird world. You know, it was monochrome. It had Mario in it. And that's all I needed. Mario, after that point, evolved. And I just stuck with him. I think the first, like, home console game that I ever owned or played was on the Sega Genesis. I didn't have a lot of games on the Sega Genesis. But I think the first game I ever played on there was um, Sonic Spinball. I never did own a single official Sonic game, Lord knows why, but all I had was Sonic Spinball being the first console game, and that was hard enough, but it was fun, because I could just, you know, I was I really like pinball, and having whoever this blue guy was bouncing back and forth on the walls was a nice added bonus. All I had was like three other games, or maybe two. I think I echoed the dolphin in the first Mortal Kombat, so you know, that... Uh, <laughs> that really says a lot that I really had nothing. I went to friends' houses and they had freaking like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I'm like, wow, what's all this? I got it. You got all that Sonic? That's so cool! And just, I don't know, man. Kind of stunk how I didn't have everything else that everyone else did. But then I got an N64, and then things changed. But, but that's just, you know, being the first couple games I owned on either of those consoles. I was still grateful for them because from that point on, video games just snapped for me. I'm like, this is good. This is real good. Uh, next question is, what upcoming game are you most hyped for, if any? You know, Animal Crossing New Leaf? Sorry, for New Leaf. <laughs> Jeez, what am I talking about? Animal Crossing, um, was it New Horizons? I don't know why I'm forgetting the name. Just the new Animal Crossing game coming to the Switch. Th that, yes. That I'm genuinely hyped for. I was pleasantly surprised when my first game was Animal Crossing New Leaf, and that blew me away. I always wondered, look at this game series, I'm like, what's the big deal? Why do people like this? And I gave New Leaf a shot. Um, a year later, I'm just like, this is, this is everything. So, you know, um, the newest game for Animal Crossing looks pretty great. Doom Eternal looks absolutely enthralling. See, I can't really pick one, because there's a lot of great games coming out next year. Some stuff I can't even get, because I just own a Switch. I'm not a PlayStation or Xbox kind of guy, but I can see if other people do have them. I can, like, genuinely enjoy the hype from a distance and just be like, wow, that looks really great. I'm sure it's going to be a great game and all, and <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to expect. There's a lot of surprises still coming out at some point this year. Metroid Prime 4, when that does eventually come out, that is going to be killer. Um, but for now, I would just say Animal Crossing. There's nothing I'm really thinking that's really making me like, oh, 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 or maybe it, there was stuff. I just can't remember within the last, like, news outlets or E3 from last year. I'm sure there's a lot of games. I just can't think of any directly. But Animal Crossing, that's always cool with everybody. Let's go with that. What's your favorite game publisher? Nintendo. N -N Nintendo. Next, do you have any hobbies besides being an epic gamer, of course? Assuming that is a hobby of yours. Yes, it quite is. 
Other hobbies of mine include um, writing music, um, doing the voice acting work that I do, um, listening to music, and drawing. So basically just everything within the entertainment outlet. I'm not the best doodler, as far as you can tell from my drawings as you're looking at right now, but you know, uh, whatever, apples and oranges. Um, I do enjoy that. I am enthralled in being into anything that works with my voice with singing. I enjoy singing quite a bit, as far as you may already tell within my content. But, you know, just everything with the entertainment business, I just feel like when you got people, you know, watching you and really genuinely enjoying stuff from you, because it's just natural to you and they just love how, how that, you know, affects them. You know, is there something really satisfying about that? I'm gonna say just about pleasing people or anything like that, but just, you know, just getting that adoration, just, you know, from a general audience that really looks at you and it's like, wow, you know what? That's pretty cool. You know, that, I, I, I get off by that a lot. Uh, don't, don't take that out of context. When I say getting off, I mean, just like get off by that. I mean, I just mean, it, it makes me happy. Don't think anything bad. Don't think anything bad. That's awful. Don't. Did you ever hear of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? I'm gonna assume that Star Wars, who the... Yes. Yes, he did. You know what? Yes, he did. I have heard of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis. He was not good. He was not a cool dude. If he had anything to do with the first three prequel Star Wars movies, then he was just awful. If he was in a spinoff, sure, he was awful there too. At least it can't be as bad as, um, I don't know, as effective as, um, Palpatine, uh, something about episode 9, I'm not gonna say anything cause spoilers, but if you already know, uh, you, you know he's, he's done something to, to do a thing, uh, with a particular character, but if you've seen the movie, you already know, so, uh, whatever, just, he, if he's as bad as that, then, you know, Plaguey is bad man, bad man. Bad. Malcrash1 asks, I was wondering, how big is your video game collection right now? That is an impossible thing to ask, because a lot of games over time I've either lost, sold, or just, you know, e either of the two. Um, a lot of games I have actually, I could say, if anything, the game consoles that I have owned in my life, I will quickly name off the top of my head. Let's see, I have owned Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo 3DS XL, Nintendo 2DS, Nintendo 2DS XL, um, let's see, home consoles. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, Nintendo 64, GameCube, uh, Wii, Wii U, Switch, uh, okay, let's see, let's see. I've owned an Xbox 360, I've had a PlayStation 2, had games for PlayStation 1, but never owned a PlayStation 1, just had the PlayStation 2. Um, I have games on Steam, um, don't play Steam as much anymore because of computer issues, but I do have a handful of games already played on there. Um, I want to say that's about it. Oh, the, 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 let's see. No, that's about it, actually. So if I were to point out any games that I have currently, I did do a count for a friend of mine. I wanted to know how many Switch games I have. Uh, to know how active I am on that front, uh, last I counted, I had just under 40 physical games and close to about 150 games digitally downloaded. Um, that doesn't include games that are demos or applications, at least I don't think. Uh, some games are a lot shorter than others. There are a lot of narrative type games that I do enjoy looking into. And some games, you know, are just super cheap or I'm just really hyped about within that year of coming out. And it's been about three years since the Switch came out. So 150 games seems reasonable. Actually, that sounds actually absolutely horrific. But let's just ignore that. There, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? It's just I just I play games, okay? I play games like any normal child. Please, please leave me alone, please. Obby. I know this dude. He asks, bro, like, what's your favorite game, bro? Um, now, that's also a game-related question that I can't give a definite answer to. There are a lot of incredible games that I have played throughout my lifetime. Um, if anything, Nintendo-related, sure. Like, I would guess, say, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door is one of the top ones. Um, Dragon Quest XI really blew me away last year. Um, Breath of the Wild was one of the best games of the decade. Um... You know, it is very, very, very difficult to say because, you know, it's harder because I'm not a big PlayStation person that I mean, I actually really enjoy PlayStation stuff. I just don't have it out of my way just to own the console for it. And other companies will definitely make out stuff here and there, too. A lot of narrative games are super, super great, too. 
Um, some I can't really put my finger on deliberately, but there's a lot of enjoyable games that have taken a lot of my time. Doesn't necessarily make them some of the best I've ever played. I think it's just a lot of what I have when it sparks to me content-wise, whether it's story and stuff like that, and just like gameplay elements that just like grow. Um, it's hard to really say, but you know what? There's a handful of games. If you were to ask me what kind of games that came out, what are your personal favorites? I could just tell you exactly how I feel about them um, if you take the time. But, you know, I have way too many favorites out there, but some of the top ones ever? Uh, that's impossible, bro. That's impossible. Uh, Smeagol Heagle asks, if you were to voice any characters, who would be your top picks? Um, I don't know how to approach this one. I probably should have thought this one over. Um, what would be my top picks if I were to voice any characters? Well... Honestly, I wish I could voice a lot of characters. Like, I would preferably want to try and do stuff more, uh, more original voices when it comes to certain projects. When I do impressions, you know, that's a whole other thing. Like, uh, if any characters I enjoy doing impressions of is like animated characters, whether they span within the, the lengths of Cartoon Network, Disney, uh, Nickelodeon. Um, I don't know. It, it seems pretty cliche, and I don't have a direct answer to. But it's kind of hard to really describe it with how this has been asked. But if I were to choose any top picks of characters, it would just be any I feel the most comfortable with. Like, I'm pretty good at Doofenshmirtz, I would personally say. Um, I do sometimes Spongebob in on occasion. Um, I used to do really good Mario impressions, um, for sure. Like, both all four italian-esque characters i would do impressions of and stuff here and there maybe i'll feature it in a video at some point um yeah game stuff too as i'm mentioning mario there's a lot of game characters that i'll definitely voice here and there but you know it depends uh, there's a lot going for me but i would like to just assume that i can do the ones that i'm very comfortable with all right moving on and these last four questions are by adi um, that is a friend of a friend of mine's, and their first question is, what do you think about Xbox Live being expanded on a Nintendo console? Does it benefit it? Absolutely. Yes. 100%. Indefinitely. Um, if we'd have gotten games like Ori and the Blind Forest, uh, Cuphead, um, cross-play games on, like, um, Rocket League and Minecraft, and some other games that came out that I'm not thinking of directly... You know, I don't know where we'd be. Like, this connectivity between gaming consoles, and I think PlayStation is slowly, slowly getting to that too. It's incredible. It's awesome. Just to know that you can, like, really play with people from something else entirely different, and you don't have to feel left, you don't have to feel like you're left out with all your friends playing games because you can all play the same thing. It's awesome. Xbox is really doing a pretty cool thing. Xbox Live, integrating their stuff possibly, including stuff like getting achievements and making party rooms. I don't know how that's all going to work, if that's really still happening. I might have heard about it a little bit. But for that idea alone, in concept, on paper, looking at a storyboard, screenplay, <laughs> um, yeah, it's um really cool. Very, very, very cool. Most, anti most anticipated Switch game 2019. Well, 2019 had passed, but my favorite game on the Switch that very year was Dragon Quest. Um, but he's talking about anticipated. I think my most hyped game probably was... I'm gonna have to pause on this one, y'all. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, it was Luigi's Mansion 3. I was just so out of it just knowing every bit of that footage they were showing earlier that year and at E3, I was just like, dude, this is the one, this is the one, and it finally came out, and it was the one. It was such a dang good game. That was what I was most hyped for that entire year. Um, other games definitely came pretty close, none that I can think of directly on top of my head because I'm not really looking at them, but from what I've seen, um... Luigi's Mansion 3 was going to be the game for me, and it sure was. Sure was. Next is worst meme of 2019. I'd think on this one for a second. Uh, canceling the anime for Pop Team Epic after one season having an OVA. That freaking sucked. Next. And last is your favorite YouTubers. Um, I'm not even looking at anything right now for this one, but I'm just gonna think on on top of my head. Now... 
I want to say Game Grumps kind of has a close spot to me because I've watched them for quite a while. I haven't watched every single thing they've put out directly within the last five years at least, but sometimes I'll kind of put stuff in the background as a compilation. Um, I'll watch a good amount of Oni plays here and there as well. Um, I think particular content I do enjoy. John Tron, um, gaming stuff like Scott the Waz. Um, see, I'm not thinking too deliberately on stuff. Um, maybe a reaction channel or two just because of particular hype for particular things that I do enjoy watching them see. Um, I do enjoy a lot of ASMR content as well. I mean, that's way too obvious. Um, um, both Vivid has some really nice stuff. Um, Lemon Leaf and Lynn and um, um, Teacup Audio and Captain Nemo and oh boy, there's a lot of people I just started recently following too, um, based on connections of particular channels that I'm going to check out, and I'm probably gonna have some extra favorites as well. I just gave out some of the most linear, basic ass sounding. Uh, lists of youtubers, <laughs> but there is a lot more But if you want to know on what I like and who I follow then I would suggest going on my page and looking at all the people that I follow Yeah, probably go with that and Ladies and gentlemen, that is about it. This was a bit of a venture I was hoping this to be a little bit shorter, but you know what? I'm glad I still put this out like I did um, Thank you all so so much for watching. It really means a lot to know that even if something like this is delayed, people still put out questions and stuff. It makes me really thankful that there's still a community out there that still bothers to watch my content. It gets me emotional, you know? And, uh, <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> um, but seriously, um, thank you guys so much for the continuous support no matter what phase of something I'm going through when it comes to my early early stuff to my shit posting years to kind of working my way into voice acting and to just where I am today just making just multitasking content um, anything kind of goes on this page really so I'm hoping y'all will anticipate what's to come next um, if you, if you haven't already yourself, or if you think someone else would maybe like my content, uh, be sure to subscribe. Um, it's free, um, doesn't cost a thing, and you can follow other pages of mine on the description if you want to catch up with my other stuff. I will be making another Q&A video this year. I will give out details when, uh, sometime in the future, but when it does come out, I will be very, very ready for it next time. Trust me, I'm not just gonna dwindle on this like I did before. So, that is the plan. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. More content coming up throughout 2020. Hopefully I'm gonna make stuff way too late, but trust me, a lot of stuff is coming. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day, pleasant night, afternoon, evening, twilight, dawn, dusk, wherever you at, if you're living in snow, cool hope you guys are doing well down there check you later good night goodbye adios